Mindfulness is the energy of being aware and awake to the present moment. It is the continuous practice of touching life deeply in every moment. To be mindful is to be truly alive and at one with those around us. Practicing mindfulness does not require that we go anywhere different. We can practice mindfulness in our room and on our way from one place to another. We can do very much the same things we always do. Walking, sitting, working, eating, talking. Except we learn to do them with an awareness of what we are doing. These words are from the Vietnamese Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh. His advice to live mindfully, here in the present moment, is a wonderful recipe for helping us mind the environment we live in, so that we can leave a better world for those who come after us, and for those who are sharing the world with us today people, plants, and animals. Living mindfully, living simply, will help us mind our planet. Please Mind the Planet is a sharing, a sharing of information that does not appear to be widely known, since the implications of what is happening to our climate are quite serious. We feel compelled to let others know what we have learned. What you will see in this series of videos are excerpts from a presentation given in August of 2009 in Vancouver, Canada. And while some of the data may now be a bit dated, the general thrust of the challenge we face today remains the same. While what we are about to investigate can seem complicated, we have kept the important pieces clear and simple. The basic scientific facts can be easily summarized. The climate is changing. We are the ones causing it and the consequences will be very bad. Even though this is a serious topic about potentially significant changes to our way of life, we are not without hope. You will see how simply living mindfully can reduce and even eliminate the risks we are taking today. The three big easy things we can all do are described in the mindfulness practices. We will begin by looking at the way climate change is affecting us today globally and locally. The risk is to our climate, and the question is what's happening to the climate? We're seeing it today, but basically what you want to see here is the trend. This is the temperature over the last 120 years or so. The climate today is changing. When we talk about global climate change, a lot of people are worried what might happen in 50 years or 100 years, but it's happening now, and it's not just global, it's local. For those of us living here in BC, this graphic here shows how the temperature has been warming up every decade. We've been getting warmer and warmer. In the most recent decades, that's been accelerating. And some BC Forest Ministry scientists say that we've actually warmed up four degrees over the last hundred years in terms of our minimum winter temperatures. And with warmer winters, it actually means more bugs. The cold winters that we used to have in the forest would be cold enough long enough that would kill the larvae from things like the pine beetle. Today, the pine beetle is not being killed in the winter, so it's expanding, and it's expanding very rapidly. So here's the picture of the little bugger. He's less than a quarter of an inch, but it bores into the pine trees and starts to destroy the pine trees. So here's pictures of massive areas of the province of BC that have been killed by the pine beetle. It's 14 million hectares today. The extent of this infestation is huge. In fact, one BC Forest Ministry scientist forecasts that by 2013, 80% of our forests will be gone. Even today, twice as much lumber is being killed by the beetle than we're actually harvesting. And as you can see in this graph, it's not just in BC, it's starting to expand. It's broken past the Rockies, and now it's infesting Albertan forests, and the whole boreal forest that reach from coast to coast will eventually be threatened. One Canadian Forest Service scientist said that when all this carbon that's tied up in these dead trees is released, there'll be two billion tons of carbon released between now and 2020. And it's also happening up in Alaska and the Northwest Territory. Different bugs, but it's the same principle. When our climate changes, our weather will also be affected, and often with deadly consequences. Severe weather events such as heat waves, torrential downpours, and flooding, as well as an increase in the number of killer hurricanes, will become more and more common in the future. For a while, there was some doubt that this would be the case. But as more data comes to light, the outlook is becoming clearer. 
a recent study just in, in August of 2009 in Nature magazine verified that as we get warmer, the number of hurricanes we have in an average decade does grow. In a cool decade, we have seven to eight hurricanes. In the warmer decades, like we're having now, we're averaging about 15 hurricanes per year over a decade. Hurricanes like Katrina and Cyclone Nargis, which decimated Myanmar in 2008, these hurricanes created over $100 billion worth of damage, but more importantly, cost tens of thousands of lives. And they are related to the increasing global temperatures. The European heat wave that killed so many people in 2003 is also going to happen more often. As the weather gets warmer, heat waves are going to be more severe and more common. This heat wave, which took 35,000 lives across Europe, killed almost 15,000 in France alone. And most of them were the elderly. Through the Arctic, whether you're in Russian Siberia or in the North American Arctic, the permafrost is melting. The further north we go at the higher latitudes, the faster the temperature is warming up. And as the, under, as the ground underneath the infrastructure melts, the buildings are collapsing. Sometimes even whole villages are being destroyed by the, the thawing permafrost. And that's got a lot of people worried because we have huge oil pipelines up there, such as the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline, which runs 800 miles and carries 2 million barrels of oil a day. If that starts to crumble and break open, that's going to have a huge ecological problem. So the climate is changing now. This isn't something we have to worry about in the future. We're seeing it now. It is having a huge economic toll. It's having a huge lifestyle toll. People are dying because of climate change. And it's going to get worse. 